Hello and welcome to a Keysmash Studios video. Today we're going to be going over the topic of creating a collectible and implementing it in your Unity game. If you find this video to be helpful, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to our channel. With that said, we're going to hop right into it. The first thing we're going to do is create the collectible. In order to do that, we're going to create a quick coin, attach an animation, and make sure that it is a trigger. So when I do that, I'm just going to come over here in our scene. I'm going to create a 3D object that is a cylinder. I'll drag this up to where we can see it so we can see exactly how I'm manipulating it. First things first, I'm going to scale it down so that it's coin-like. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to make sure it's exactly 90 by putting it in in the math. Now I'm going to attach just a yellow color to it. This will just give it the, the look and feel of a yellow coin. The next thing we're going to do is create an animation for this. This is actually pretty simple on, on small objects such as this. So I'm just going to open up my animation window or hit Control 6 if you don't know. I'm going to hit this Create here. And I'm going to call this Coin Animation. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this Record button. And I'm going to drag this to a little, make it a little bit smaller so we can see what's going on here. And I'm just going to rotate it around this flat axis right here, just so it creates a key here at zero. And then I want to skip ahead to one, or just after. It doesn't really exactly matter when. And I'm going to rotate it 360 degrees around that same axis. So now when I hit play on this, we'll see that the coin rotates. But you'll notice that it doesn't quite rotate smoothly. And there's a really quick fix for that, we're going to come down here to where it says curves. And if we zoom out here, we'll see that our, our animation plays and slows and speeds up based on this curve. So what we actually need to do is come right here to these keys where these little yellow dots are. We're going to go to both tangents and hit linear. And we're going to do that on both sides of this animation. And what that does is it just makes it a constant motion of spinning and just like that, we're all said and done. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Close that out. You notice that our coin in our, in our scene, we're just going to call this a coin. Our coin in our scene now has this animator here, and it's already set up to go. We don't need to change it at all. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that it's set up to be a trigger meaning that we don't want to collide with it, we want to interact with it. And the way you do that is you come right here and you check this little box on its capsule collider saying that it is in fact a trigger. So when something runs into this collider, rather than doing physics to make it like bounce and move away or anything like that, it just triggers some action that we can set up in our code. With that said, we're almost entirely done with this prefab. We're going to do one last thing. We're going to come up here to the tags. We're going to add a tag. And we're going to create a new one, and we're just going to call this one coin. So in our coin game object again, we're just going to go ahead and assign that coin tag. Now that we've done that, I'm going to take this coin game object, click and drag it down here, and it's going to create a coin prefab. So now I can click and drag this into the scene, manipulate it however I want, and when I hit play, they'll both be spinning and rotating. I can do that however many times I want, but for right now, we're just going to go into our character controller. If you need help with the character controller, I'll leave a link in the description below for a character controller video. But for now, I'm just going to open up this script. This is not a super fancy character controller, but we're just going to add some things to it. The first thing we're going to add is a private int coins, and this is going to be the amount of coins that we collect. And since we're creating a variable, we're going to go ahead and instantiate that and start. We're going to say every time the game starts, we set our coins to zero, and we're good there. So we need to have two things that happen in our scripts. We need to have the trigger event, and we need to have a way to detect how many coins we have, and so on and so forth. So let's come down here to the very bottom. And we're going to type in void on trigger enter. So if you're in 3D, you want this to be on trigger enter. If you're in 2D, you want it to be on trigger enter 2D. So private void on trigger enter, we get a variable here of a collider that is named other. So we want to say if 
we're looking at this other object that we've run into, if that other game object has a tag, and remember before we set the tag as, as something, so if that game object has a tag, and if that tag is set to coin, well then we want to execute some type of code here. What we actually want to do is make our coins variable that we set up up top increase by one, and not only that, we also want to make sure that the collectible inside the game, when we pick up the coin, disappears. So we're going to say other dot game object dot set active, and we're going to swap that to false. So when we run into it, it increments our coins, and we set it to false, so the coin disappears in the game. The only thing left to do is to set up our way to determine how many coins that we have. And I'm just going to do that in update because it's pretty simple to do. I'm going to say if input dot get key down. And then I'm going to give this a key code. And I'm going to say that key code is C. So if I hit C on my keyboard, we want to display how many coins we have. So I'm going to say debug dot log. And then I'm just going to say, you have so many coins. So our debug log is just going to spit out, you have zero coins, you have two coins, you have four coins, so on and so forth. Anytime I hit C, it's going to spit that out. So that's actually all the code that we need to add to our character controller. I recognize your character controller may be totally different than this, but you just need to attach a way to increment the coins and need to make sure that you have a way to deal with a trigger. As far as determining what to do with the coins, most of the time you're going to attach that to a UI. And if you'd like to see a video on how to do that, please just let me know down below. I'll create a whole video for that. In the case of this tutorial, though, we're going to come back here to our scene. And you'll notice if I hit C right away, it says you have zero coins. If I run into these coins, <laughs> I had to jump up a little bit to make sure I actually hit that collider. Um, they disappear. If I hit C, it'll say I have two coins. And just like before, I can click and drag this coin prefab in. I'll move this one down just a little bit. I can copy them. I can paste them. I can move them all around throughout the map. So you just click and drag this wherever you need to put it in your level. If you're doing like a modified rollerball game or some type of collection event in a, in a much larger game, you can just go through and each time you run into one of these, it's going to keep track of it. So you can see I hit C, it says I have four coins. I'll go ahead and collect the last two and we'll see that it says I have six. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know down below. You can find a link to our Discord in the description. It's a pretty helpful Discord. We have a support channel in there. If you have any questions, you can come harass me in there. We also stream on Twitch. I will put a link in the description for our Twitch stream. You should also check out our game out on the App Store. You can find it on any Android phone. I'll put a link in the description as well. As always, I hope this has been helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and we'll see you next week.